All right, here are the seven things that you need to know before you even start to think about selling on Amazon FBA. What's up guys, welcome to the video. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back, it's good to see you. And if you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Miles and this channel right here is all about teaching you how to go from zero to six or seven figures in your Amazon business like I've been able to do over the last couple of years. So today I wanna to tell you about these seven things that you need to know before starting to sell on Amazon FBA as a beginner. And these are the top things that I have seen both in my own experience and growing my own business up to multiple seven figures per year and they're also based on the discussions, the questions that I keep getting from my hundreds of students in the FBA Freedom Accelerator, which is my private FBA course. And it's also based on all the comments and the feedback and the dialogue that I have with you guys here on my channel. And I can pretty much guarantee that if you understand the seven things that I'm gonna run you through in this video, you will be ahead of 99% of other beginners out there. So if you do like the idea of that, then make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you get value out of it. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you want more content and videos like this uh, coming out every week. Click the notification bell as well. And if you have any questions or any feedback, or you just wanna say thanks, leave me a comment down below. Doing all of those things, I, I really love getting that feedback and it'll help me grow this channel and get the word out as well. So I appreciate it. So without further ado, let's get into the seven things that you need to know before starting to sell on Amazon FBA as a beginner. I'm gonna start with number one, which is action beats information. And this one can be counterintuitive because you probably feel that there is so much information to learn and there is so much information out there that you may feel overwhelmed and you don't know where exactly to start. Or if you're a little bit further along, maybe you've been following my channel for a while, maybe you have a lot of information built up, but you still don't feel confident to get to that next step. But here's the thing, you will never feel 100% confident to get to that next step. You will never feel like you have all of the information you need to make a risk-free decision. You might get to 70% certainty, you might even get to 80% certainty, but that next 20% of like feeling absolutely sure and confident in yourself Obtaining more and more information will not help you get there. And in fact, it will be counterproductive. And the reason why is that action beats information. Progress in any way, shape or form, and particularly with an Amazon business, is actually a series of feedback cycles where you absorb information being the first step. You learn something new. Maybe you learn a new product research technique or you learn how to, or a technique with supply negotiations. You learn that, you take in the information, and then step two is actually taking the action and putting that information that you have learned into practice. If you want a rule of thumb to go off, then split all of your time, all of your time that you're dedicating towards Amazon or to any other business project and split it into the learning stage and the doing stage. And you wanna split that time, I would recommend at least 50-50 at the start. So you, if you spend two hours a day learning, you have to spend two hours a day doing. And actually, as you progress, as you have a product selling, as you have multiple products selling and a brand on Amazon and you're starting to make money, the amount of time that you will spend passively learning and consuming information will go down and the amount of time that you spend doing and learning through doing will go up. And so by the end, maybe you're at 90% doing and 10% passive learning. But in general, remember that action trumps information. Number two, realize that you need to start small with one product at a time. I know it can be really tempting to have these big visions and I definitely recommend having a big vision of a brand or a series of products or this big profitable business that's just you know generating you so much cash flow that you never have to work again in your life. That idea is, is really compelling and it's really intoxicating and it's nice to get caught up in that idea. But remember that you just need to start with one product and that product as well needs to work by itself. So if this entire big vision is all around this uh, unified brand and all of these products you're gonna sell for years into the future and maybe you're thinking about expanding into bricks and mortar and all of that, just forget about that vision for a little while and just start with the first product. And that's gonna be a product that's just gonna make some money and you're gonna use it as a foundation to learn. And like I said, it's taking action and then learning from that. If you do that enough times, you will suddenly know a lot and you won't need much more new information. But that first product needs to do all of that. And so if you're waiting to do all of these different steps, you're trying to get trademarks, you're trying to just wait and wait and wait while you build up this big thing, the chances are that first of all, your first initial idea and your first initial vision almost never actually turns out in reality the way that you first pictured it. Because you, it is a series of doing these things and you're gonna try a product and you're gonna find another product after that and maybe that first one actually isn't a great product and a lot of time, by the way, beginners don't do very well with their first products. That's just the harsh reality. And you're gonna do all of these things and all of these things are gonna to happen to you over the course of maybe six months or a year. And that vision could just be completely untenable. It could be completely not practical for you to ever actually do. So just get one product out there, get it selling, see what happens from that, learn from that, start with a second product. And by the time you've built up a couple of products, you will start to then start to see what this portfolio can look like. 
And I'm gonna talk about this later in this video as well, but you can then take a completely different approach and, and go for that big vision, that big brand. But please for now, just forget about that huge long-term vision and just make sure that the first product makes you some money. Get one product cash flowing. If you wanna launch two or three at once, uh, which is more of an advanced technique that I probably wouldn't recommend to most of you, I did do that when I started. Then you can do that. You can launch however many products you wanna launch at once, but they all need to just work by themselves on their own. Again, forget about the big brand, start small, one product at a time. Number three, I want you to back yourself and invest properly. Invest properly in yourself, invest properly in your business, and you will see much greater success in the future and you'll see much faster success as well. So what do I mean by that? I actually mean this in two ways. Firstly, time, that's your own time, the hours that you dedicate to learning the craft of selling on Amazon FBA, to building your business, that's your time. And the second one is money. So I'll talk about time first. And I would recommend upfront that you are willing to dedicate at least 15 hours per week to this business for six months. That figure could be less. You could find a product early on and just be happy to go for it. Or it could be more than that. It really depends. But in general, if you have the mindset of being willing to put in, that's two hours a day, that's more than two hours a day for a period of six months, you are probably going to be dedicated enough to actually get to the point of succeeding. If on the other hand, you only wanna spend 20 minutes a day sometimes or you know an hour on the weekend doing this, chances are you're never going to get anywhere. If you've watched enough of my videos, you know that this is simply a business model. This is no longer a get rich quick scheme like it was quite a few years ago now. It really has changed and the common theme is that hard, intelligent work pays off. It pays off very lucratively, but trying to minimize effort just will get you nowhere. So that was time, how about money? Now put the same attitude that you took towards time and put it towards money as well. The more that you can invest into this and the more that you are willing to invest into this, the faster and the greater the returns you will reap in six months or in 12 months down the line. So one really big difference I see between beginners or people with no business experience and people who do have successful businesses is that people with businesses are able to see things as costs of doing business. It's an investment that you, that you spend money expecting some sort of return. Whereas people who don't have much business experience, they just see things as expenses and they're trying to minimize expenses. And that attitude, while it works if you just have a salary and you're just trying to you know, save as much as possible and budget, when you're trying to start a business, it can be a really dangerous and toxic attitude because what you're trying to do is get a good return on investment, return on both time investment and now money. So that means, for example, listing photography. Why would you skimp on listing photography when listing photography is the key driver of your click-through rate and then also your conversion rate as well on your listing? Those are the things that make you money, those two metrics. So why would you try and skimp and save, you know, a hundred or a couple of hundred dollars there when that is the thing that's gonna make you 10 to 20 to 30 or even more thousand dollars every year? So listing photography is a big one. It's a key value driver for the profitability of your business. The other one that I would say is product quality. A lot of people try and cut suppliers down to the bone on prices. Generally, you will find that they will actually just cut, they will cut their own costs and they will reduce the quality of the materials going into your product. So negotiation and getting the best price, or not getting the best price, but getting a good price is important. But if you are just trying to cut way lower than anything that anybody else is buying it for, chances are you're gonna shoot yourself in the foot. Your product is gonna end up with bad reviews on Amazon because the quality and the materials are of subpar standard. And again, that's your key leverage there. That's how you make money. So listing photography and product quality with your supplier are two of the main things. Uh, I'm not able to go through every single thing in this business, obviously, because this is just one of the seven points. If you want me to break down in greater detail in a new and a separate video, how what are the realistic costs to start an Amazon FBA business? And I can break it down um, itemized in that video. Leave me a comment down below and say you want a you know, a video on how much it costs to start Amazon FBA. I do all these videos for you guys based on what you want. So there's one last thing that I wanted to say, which is don't expect that you can put in more money and take out less time as a result. And this is a question that I've been asked recently. Uh, it's actually not a bad idea, which is basically instead of spending five or $10,000 on an Amazon FBA product, could you spend $80,000 and then have to spend much less time and just do much less work as a result of having more money? Unfortunately, the answer is no. If I could spend $80,000 on a single product and just kick back and not have to do anything, I would. But unfortunately, there's no practical way to do this. Paying $5,000, for example, for listing photography is probably not gonna get you a better outcome than paying a couple of hundred dollars. And similarly, if you spend $20,000 to order you know, 5,000 units when you only needed 500, 
then that's probably just a waste of money as well. And you probably just have goods and inventory for the next three years. So make sure you are investing what is required, but that includes not just money, but also your time and your ability to put work and effort into the business. Number four, tools are leverage. And this is an extension of the previous point, but this is something I get asked really often, which is looking at Amazon product research tools and looking at it from a cost perspective instead of a value perspective. Again, the person with the salary wants to minimize expenses. The person with the business wants to get wants to spend more money and get a good return on investment on that money. So when I'm looking at a product research tool, like the main ones of uh, Viral Launch and Helium 10 and Jungle Scout, um, when I'm looking at those tools, I just wanna know that I'm getting good bang for my buck. I don't wanna know that I'm paying less. I wanna pay more and get more out of them. So I'm not gonna do a dedicated tool comparison in this point, but know that when you're looking at those product research tools and you are comparing them, Firstly, you do need one. You can't do this business without them. And you want to look at a feature set, see which one is most comprehensive, and then just pay the money that gives you that comprehensive feature set. So as of right now, I would say the best bang for buck for your money is going to be Viral Launch and Helium 10. One of those two will do what you need. Like I said before, happy to make more videos. If you want a comprehensive review of certain features, of certain tools or a comparison, leave me a comment down below requesting it and I'll see what I can do. But remember, in general, the right tool is not going to be the cheapest tool. Number five, forget about the passion product, at least for now. This is similar to point one and point two. You just want to get a product out there making you money and doing stuff basically so that you can look at it, so that you can start optimizing it and know what works and what doesn't work within your own business, within your own field and sphere of experience. It is completely your responsibility for your own future, maybe the future of your kids, your family, or whoever you're else you're responsible for to just get started as fast as possible. Do what you need to do and leave the ego at the door to get a product selling successfully on Amazon. And unfortunately, what happens is when you're looking for that passion product, just like if you're looking for this, you know, super brand you wanna build, but if you're looking for a passion product, something that it speaks to your heart, you know, it's a really nice idea, but it's ego driven. It's not numbers driven. It's not practical or pragmatic. When you look at that and you're just narrowing yourself down to those very few products, because we're not passionate about lots of different things, you're making things much more difficult for yourself. And I'm not saying you can't sell something that you're passionate about. I'm not saying that at all. But if it just so happens that the products or the things that you want to sell that you're passionate about selling suck on Amazon, then don't sell them because your business is gonna suck too. Sell the stuff that makes money. And here's the thing, here's the tip. If you start with those products and you start with products that you may not care about at all, but you can go through this process, you can go through the Amazon process and get something successfully making you money, you are going to be building a really, really valuable foundation of skills and experience. And when you have built up this foundation of skills and experience with these products that are simply cash generating products, you are gonna have not only free time, you're gonna have free money, you're gonna have capital, but you can have the experience and the know-how to actually then look at the products that you are passionate about to, build, to start building that brand of the thing that you care about, your real vision for the future. And you're gonna be so much better equipped to be able to do that. And all you had to do was, again, leave the ego at the door, wait an extra six, 12 months, maybe two years to then go and do that properly and to do it successfully. And then to create a legacy or something that you're proud of. But if you start there, if you try and shortcut that entire process, shortcut the products that will generate you the cash, the income, to build yourself the initial freedom and the experience, you're probably setting yourself up for failure. So don't go for the passion product, not at the start. Number six, Amazon is not your friend. You need to understand that Amazon is the world's most customer centric company. We as sellers, we are not Amazon's customers. And so what happens is, and the most common examples that I am talking about now that I wanna share with you are generally around seller account verification and also listing issues. So either having products um, being listed and then having roadblocks to getting those products successfully listed for the first time or having them selling and listing and then having Amazon take those products down, remove those listings or suspending those listings. There are lots of different things that can go into this. So the specific reasons I'm not gonna talk about in this video. Again, if you wanna know more, leave me a comment down below, letting me know what I should make videos on. But what I do wanna tell you is that you have to understand this and go into this with the mindset of realizing that Amazon cares about its customers and any time that there is an issue between you as the seller and your customer who is buying your product on Amazon, Amazon will always side with the customer. And what that means is anytime that Amazon thinks that you might not be who you say you are, or you aren't providing the correct identity documents according to what they want you to do, or if they think your listing is not what you say it is, or if a customer is unhappy with the listing and they think it's counterfeit or something like that, it doesn't matter whether that is or isn't the case, Amazon will always take the customer's side. And I'm also not gonna debate with you the morals or whether that is right or wrong. I'm just telling you what reality is so that you can expect it and deal with it appropriately. 
So keep in mind that Amazon is not your friend. Here is some practical advice and some guidance and things to keep in mind before you go and start selling on Amazon. First of all, if you have problems with account verification, just give Amazon exactly what they want. There'll always be a small technicality or something that you aren't following in their rules or there is a identity mismatch. Maybe you have you know, a slightly different name or slightly different address on the documents that you're providing. It's completely gonna be your responsibility to go and find out, work out what that, uh, that you know, mismatch is and then fix it. And you also won't get customer service like you would expect as a customer when you contact seller support. They are not gonna give you much information. So what you can do is go on, I would recommend just big Facebook groups because what you wanna find are people who've had the same issue that you had. And again, there are lots of different potential issues. Find people who've been through that and either be able to see what their solution was or just reach out and ask them or go into those huge Facebook groups and ask the question yourself. What you should not do is put all the hope and expectation on Amazon seller support to get you out of that problem because again, they don't care. They think that maybe you're not who you say you are. So they're always gonna take the customer side and just you know, err on the side of caution and not give you access. Second piece of guidance is around listings. If you have problems getting your listings up to scratch, go and read the Amazon documentation. If you are trying to pass through hazmat verification, there is a process that you need to follow. Go and read the Amazon documents and do that before you ask seller support what to do. Because again, seller support are probably, they're not very well trained. They're probably gonna mislead you, uh, not deliberately, but they just won't tell you what to do. So it's really your responsibility to go and find that out. And the last piece of guidance, if you have a product already selling on Amazon and then it gets taken down due to a customer complaint or whether it's for counterfeit or uh, return rate or something like that or defects, what you need to do is admit responsibility. All Amazon cares about is customers not having that negative experience again. So whether or not you thought it was right or wrong, you really need to look at the root cause. And a lot of time it's a miscommunication or something wasn't clear in your listing. Make that clear and tell Amazon that you've already done that and make sure that it can't happen again. Again, if Amazon's customers are happy, Amazon will be happy with you as well, but they're not gonna choose you over the customer. So just remember, Amazon is not your friend. Number seven, reframe your expectations. And I want you to go into this entire process being happy and being accepting of the potential worst case outcome. You need to understand that when you're doing this, when you're putting money on the line, you're risking your time and your savings to start an Amazon business. There is risk involved in this. That's why there's reward. It's a risk reward equation. And that's what running a business is. That's what almost anything that's um, worth achieving in life is about, is investing something, risking it, and then getting a reward at the end of it. And that can be really difficult to take. That can be very scary, particularly when the amounts of money are large. And with Amazon FBA, often they are because it's a very cash flow intensive business. So the way that I like to look at this and be okay with taking that risk over and over again is just always be okay with, if, if, the, if it comes down to the worst case, what are the positives of that situation? And am I okay with those positives? So when I, this is a story now, but when I originally started my Amazon FBA business, my worst case scenario was that I would lose all of the money, but in the process, in the process, and by the way, it's very unlikely that you'll lose all your money. It's actually pretty unlikely that you will even do worse than break even. But that's a side point. In the process of losing all my money, I recognized that I would be able to learn all of these cool new things about running an online business. I recognized that at the end of the day, I wasn't gonna die. There was nothing, you know, my health was gonna be fine. I would just go into this with this idea of learning something new and just taking a shot. So I don't know what that framing looks like for you, but that one worked pretty well for me, which was to think of it in terms of a $5,000 investment into education, comparing it to the 30,000 I'd spent on university, which got me a crappy career. And just realizing that with 5,000 bucks, I could make a lot of money and then use it to start building this freedom enabling business, uh, which is pretty cool. So that pretty much allowed me to just go in, take the action instead of just using information to back myself and to take it one product at a time as well. And those are all of the things that I've shared with you in this video. They've worked for me, so I hope that they work for you. I wanted to leave you with one bonus. I guess you could say this is thing number eight, but definitely get help along the way. And I know that I said that information is not everything, it's about action, and that is completely correct. At the end of the day, it's always going to be up to you and how much you can take action, how well you can just put one foot in front of the other day after day after day and improve your business. But if you wanna get the right help, um, I definitely recommend you check out my FBA course, which is the FBA Freedom Accelerator. Now it's often closed. I keep it closed more often than it's open because I wanna dedicate my time and my energy to the students who are inside there. There's a few hundred of us in the mastermind and we're growing stronger every day and having a really good time doing it. So if that is interesting to you, if you want that sort of guidance, you want that sort of mentorship and community, then make sure to click the first link in the description down below for information on how to join the FBA Freedom Accelerator. Hope to see you in there soon. I hope you enjoyed today's video as well. By the way, if you did, make sure to smash the like button, leave me a comment if you want any of those other video ideas or anything else, if you have any feedback on this video. 
Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so already. One last thing, if you did enjoy this video, I've got another video for you, which I guarantee you that you'll enjoy. It's the nine secrets to succeeding on Amazon FBA. I'm gonna leave the link up here somewhere. Check that one out and I'll see you in the next video.